Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. We, we do honor and praise God for allowing us to be back in the house one more time. We see it's 10 o'clock. We're going to go and get open up. And, uh, we're going to ask. We're going to ask someone for a song and someone to lead some prayer. Our lesson for today is from the book of Galatians, the second chapter, verses 11 through 21. And the subject is, one's faith is the key. Now our lesson, uh, let us know, we must be for real. We cannot act one way with one group and another way with other people. That's right. and, uh, and so as believers, we must remember Christ died for all of us. Now as we go to our lesson, we begin with verse, uh, verse 11, and it says, But when Peter came to Antioch, I had to oppose him publicly, speaking uh, strongly against what it was he was doing, but it was very wrong. Peter used to eat with the Gentiles, until certain people came from James. Then he separated himself from them, fearing those who were circumcised. The other Jews followed Peter, uh, distant themselves from the Jew Gentiles. Even Barnabas joined in. But when I saw they were not following the truth of the gospel, I said to Peter, in front of all, if, if you, being a Jew, live like the Gentile and not the Jew, why do you insist on the Gentile to live like the Jews? And he said, we are Jews by birth and not Gentile sinners. And yet we Jewish Christians know very well that we cannot become right with God by obeying our Jewish law but only by faith in Jesus Christ to take away our sins. And so we too have trusted Jesus Christ that we might be accepted by God because of faith and not because we have obeyed Jewish law. 
No one would ever be saved by obeying him. But if we seek to be justified by Christ and found ourselves to be sinners, don't that make don't that make Christ the minister of sin? Paul says, oh, certainly not. Paul said, if he if Paul said if he build again the thing he destroyed that makes him a sinner or a loper, though the law, <coughs> through the law I died, to the law I preach. So I could live for God. I'm crucified with Christ. He lives in me. This life you see me living in the flesh. I live by faith, by the faith of the Son of God, who loved me and gave himself for me. <clears throat> he said, I do not take away the value of the grace of God, <clears throat> but if righteousness come, but if righteousness comes through the law, then Christ died for nothing. Now, as we look at this lesson, first of all, let's look at Barnabas. Barnabas' name was meant uh, son of encouragement. Uh, <clears throat> he was an apostle in the early church, and Paul was, he was Paul's companion on the first missionary journey. And because of his great reputation, Barnabas was able to calm the fear of Saul. <clears throat> his name at the time among the, Saul, his name at the time among the Christians in Jerusalem. So you see, he was somewhat a heavy hitter. And then as we look at Peter, Peter was the first apostle to recognize Jesus as the Messiah. The first apostle to witness the resurrection and proclaim salvation to the Gentiles. <clears throat> Peter had some, Peter had some pluses, a lot of pluses, but he had a few minuses. He denied Christ after telling him, oh, I'll be with you forever. Don't worry about it, Lord, I got your back. I'm going to be with you. And then you got there and denied him three times. Mm -hmm. And so <clears throat> he was, he was up, he was down, he was in, he was out. And he was somewhat sneaky. And, and that's a sad situation because Peter the Gentile had trusted Peter because he had been there with them. You know, they thought he was their friend. But he didn't care. In his heart, he had some stuff that needed to come out. But, and he was willing to walk on the water to Jesus. But Peter served as a spokesman for the disciples. And he was their recognized leader. <clears throat> so when Peter first came to Antioch, he ate with the Gentile Christian. He was comfortable living uh, and ministering among them. But just as soon <clears throat> as those people came from Jerusalem, uh -uh, he, did a, he did an about face. And uh, <clears throat> Paul asked him, said, now if you are a Jew, live like another Jew when you are not being observed by the watchdogs of Jerusalem. What right do you have to require that non-Jews to live by the Jewish law just to make a favorable impression on, <clears throat> on your old Jerusalem brothers? And, and <clears throat> God does not work like that, he said. Mm -hmm. He sent Jews to reclaim all men. When Peter <clears throat> withdrew from the fellowship with the Gentile believers, he was rejecting the truth of the gospel by accepting Jews and Gentiles, he, the, the, the gospel said he would accept them equally. He rejected that. He did not accept them either, equally. Paul said, said, you know, if I was trying to be you, said I would be re revealing the old barn that I told out, meaning this, meaning himself and the laws. He'd be going back living by the laws. But he said, I will be rebuilding those old, the old system I've been destroyed. He said, like trying to be saved by keeping the Jewish law. He said, I'll be doing that. He said, but let me, let me tell you what happened. Paul said, let me tell you He said, I tried keeping the rules and working my head off to please God. And it didn't work. So I quit being a law man so I could be God man. And Christ, he said, Christ showed me how 
and enable me to do it. I identified myself completely with him. <clears throat> Indeed, I have been crucified with Christ, so my ego no longer is a part. He said, it is no longer important that I feel righteous before you or have your good, or have your good opinion. He said, and I'm no longer driven to impress God. Christ lives in me. The life you see me living now, he said, it's not mine, but it is lived in faith to the Son of God who loved me and gave his life for me. Paul said, he does not, <clears throat> he does not ignore or overlook the power of the grace of God. He said, but if, if, a, if a living relationship with God could come by room keeping, what was the purpose of Christ that? And you know, as you look at this, you see, Paul confronted Peter. Peter acted up publicly, so Paul rebuked him publicly. He didn't wait till the end of the day and said, Peter, I'd like to see you in my office there. No, he got him right here. Mm -hmm. and, and Paul Paul and the other Jews, you know, Paul was so fearful of this Jewish, I mean Peter, of this Jewish crew. He was all right until those people from Jerusalem came. And, and he knew they would be watching everything that would be done. But, and, and even just, he, he was so concerned about that, that Jewish clique. And, and um, that he opened, he rather obeyed the law than trust God. And, and it says in verse 17, he said, they say, <clears throat> and mine may be a different word. And they say, but what if we trust Christ to save us? And then find out we were wrong. And that we cannot be saved without being circumcised and obeying all the other Jewish laws. Would that, <clears throat> would that be mean that our faith in Christ had grown up? That, that's really for someone, uh, these, these Jews who had studied the law, who act like they knew the law. They were supposed, they got the law. They were supposed to be teaching the Gentiles and helping them. And here they were, some of them were just as backwards as the Gentiles, saying that, what if we trust in God? If you trust God, that's the best thing you can do. What else you gonna do? It just didn't make any sense. And he, he says, uh, Peter said, you know, Peter was like a lot of, you know, a lot of church, church people like that too. Some of them you can't trust. You talk to them one time, they're talking, when they're with you, they're talking to you about this thing, and, and you feel like you can go to them in confidence if you need, you know, just need a little clarification on something. Mm -hmm. The next thing you know, it's been turned all upside down. That's right. I mean, if they can't come to you and talk to you, what good are you? You know, we're supposed to be ambassadors of God. We're supposed to be the ones come. We're supposed to be God hand, God feet, God eyes. We're supposed to be helping the people. But some, you know, some of us got some stuff. Now, now one thing, you look at this situation here with Peter and all. Uh, now, just think, they still, deep down in, was racist, basically. They hated the Gentiles. They didn't want to do, uh, <clears throat> they played a good game. Peter was sneaky. When, when none of the other people were there, Peter would come in and they would have food together. Mm -hmm. He even lived with one for a few days. Uh, they didn't have any food. Uh, and he would sit down, eat with them. I mean, and they thought, I'm sure that left them confused because they probably felt, mis felt misled. Mm -hmm. But Peter would eat with them, drink with them, whatever. But he just, then he, all of a sudden, Peter saw the people coming there from James, that Jerusalem clique that was coming. He got, he got scared. He didn't want to be there. So what he did, he just got up and distanced himself. Mm -hmm. And then when the other Jews saw what he was doing, Peter, who was a leader, they just next him. Everybody started moving back from the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And you wonder, what's, I'm sure the, those people wonder, what in the world is going on? But that's what they did. And sometimes, 
Church folks can be like that. Amen. And sometimes when they come to, when you come to church, it, how you do sometimes depends on who's in the audience. Sometimes your friends are there, you want to impress your friends. And then again, uh, if certain if they so the group, their favorite group's not gonna be there, they just do whatever. They don't, you know, it's not important to them because they're not getting in front of them. But uh, you think about the fact that God died for all of us. Amen. God is the ones that, you know, have He blessed. He ain't expecting us. We said we're believers in Christ. Well, he's expecting us to act like him. He expected us not to make any difference. Because who is better than who? Nobody. Nobody. And so he's not looking for that. But some people just strive to be in certain little cliques. Like, I want to, they, they do anything almost to be in that little group. Mm -hmm. And it ain't working. You know, one of our quotes that we had a uh, few Sundays ago, or one of our quotes was, why try to fit in when you were made to stand out? Mm. But some people spend their lives struggling, trying to belong to a certain group. They act like some kind of sorority or something. <laughs> but what I'm saying is that you don't need to. You, you, you get in touch with God. You stay connected with God. And let him place you where he desires to have you. Because where you're trying to go, you may not need to go there. That's right. And you don't know the price that some of them are paying mm. for trying to fit in. Mm. It ain't worth it. That's right. We only need to fit in where God wants us to. That's right. And so um, these pe Peter was, but Peter would, he would just really go sometimes. Next thing you know, like I said, when those people came from Jerusalem, man, it upset him. He was scared. He wanted to make sure everything he did was right, was up to, you know, up to their liking. And this is what's wrong with us so much for trying to be somebody that we are. That's right. <clears throat> Sometimes you don't need to do like that. And, and Peter said, uh, and Paul told uh, Peter said, you know, I died in Christ. My life is wrapped up in his now. It's not me that you see living now. Christ living in me. And he caused me to move and have my being. So he said, yeah. and you see, someone is always watching. Mm -hmm. well, you know, someone is always watching us. And sometimes they are following you. Whether you know it or not. Mm -hmm. and, and you and you, you know, you look like you look like you're a strong, you know, heavy hitter or whatever. Mm -hmm. So they're following you. Mm -hmm. And but and you need to be right. That's you right. know, this, 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 uh, lean to one side and then you lean to the other yeah. side, it ain't gonna work. Because mm -hmm. one day, our number gonna come up. Mm. And we ain't gonna have time to change. And then, too, sometimes when you go one way so long and at least and nothing bad or anything happened to you, you assume you must be doing right. <laughs> sometimes you hear people say, well, I must be doing something right. Mm. But you keep on. But what I'm saying is, see, Peter. The, the, uh, Peter and the, the Jews, they still, they had some mess with them because they did not like the Gentiles. Mm -hmm. And they played, see, that's another thing that a lot of people do. In front of your face, they pretend like, hey, you're okay. Like, I like you. You're okay. Child, you're okay. But deep down in their heart, they dislike them. You see? And I don't care who you are, or, but you got to realize until you get the heart right, you got to get the mess out of your heart. I don't care how you, you know, what kind of performance you do, how good you sing, pray, preach, whatever. But your heart, you can do a good performance. And see, when you come into the Lord, how He said we must worship Him in spirit and in truth. But sometimes you come in there, you know, we worship God just like. We are doing him a favor. Yeah. But, but it won't work. Yeah. And sooner or later, we're going to have an answer for it. Sure and be to the point that people can, if they come to you and talk to you, and you don't know the answer, try to find it from whatever. But don't make them look like a spectacle or anything. 
I'll inquire about it. Just talk with them. If they if they came to you in confidence, that's why they came to you in confidence, because they didn't want the whole world know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So why can't we just be like we ought to be? And we got we got to remember. Okay, you say you're a leader in the Lord's house. Somebody watching you. Yeah. Well, if you've been in there for a long time, you know, they look at you as maybe you done well, you know. You're trustworthy. You're knowledgeable. You know that you don't mind helping everybody. But that's not so. That's right. So mm -hmm. when you know in your heart your stuff ain't right, you need to go back to God. Yeah. You need to ask God to help you out. Mm -hmm. And see, their, their heart was not right. They were praised. And they looked down on the Gentiles thinking they were better than, than better because God gave them the law. Deep down in, Peter and Barnabas were really racist. And, and you know, we must be steadfast in our walk with the Lord, not wavering or sneaking like Peter. But everything you do, say, represent God. Everything you do or say, let it represent God. And when, be to the point when people see you coming, they see Jesus coming. They don't see you, but they see the Lord. And that's the way we, we have to be. We need to make sure that no matter what, we stay on the path. We stay on the straight and narrow. I mean, decide who you're going to serve and stick there, whichever one it is, whether it's saved or where it's gone. Amen. Decide who you're going to serve and let it be. And be for real on whichever side it is. But Peter was, like I said, the Jews were, and especially Peter because I, he was a leader. Mm -hmm. And Peter had done a lot of good things, you know, when they were out there and saw Jesus on the water and they thought he was a ghost, you know. And Peter recognized him. Peter started walking to him. Peter was brave. He was a spoke. He didn't mind speaking to him. Sometimes they say he would speak before he think. But Peter was like, he was impulsive. And that's the way, that's the way Peter was. But and he was he was good. But then on the other hand, deep down within, Peter wasn't right. He had some issues. He had some issues, just like all we have today. That's right. Mm. All of us have some issues. That's right. All of us can do a little bit of house cleaning. That's right. And uh, spring is gone, but we can do the ball cleaning. There you go. Whatever time of the year. When you need cleaning, you do the cleaning. Mm -hmm. But we can all improve. We can always improve. But we can all do some, some house cleaning by asking God to help us out, check us out, mm -hmm. look after us, look in our heart. Because you know you know very well when things, and, and sometimes you do it so long, you just kind of get used to it and you don't worry about trying to change. That's right. But you got to, it, it's time for a change. Mm -hmm. It's time for a change. Now, if, if you're going to be real, you, whatever you do for the Lord, let it be real. Mm -hmm. If you're going to be whatever, be whatever you said you're going to be. But by all means, be truthful. Be the kind of person that people will, can come to and talk to. Mm -hmm. But some, we have cliques everywhere, and our church is a full of them. Mm -hmm. And I don't care whether it's a big church, a little church, you still got the cliques. That's right. Mm -hmm. So we have to, we have to think about who we're supposed to be serving. Mm -hmm. And if we're serving God, if our heart is right with God, it doesn't make any difference who we are working with in the church. We can work together. We can entertain each other's ideas. We can do whatever needs to be done. Mm -hmm. There's a lot we can do for God. Mm -hmm. And we first ask Him to clean, help us clean house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I quote, uh, you know, we must be steadfast in our walk with the Lord. Not waving or sneaky like Peter. But everything you do or say should represent God. That's right. And our quote says, the measure of a man's real character is what he would do if he knew he would never be found out. Let's all ask God to create a clean heart and renew a right spirit within us. Are there any comments?
That's man, I just want to thank God for you teaching that awesome lesson. He done said everything. But like you said, Peter had some stuff in him. And we all got some stuff in us. Mm -hmm. And we need, like you said, go to God and ask God to help us clean ourselves up. And then we stay on the right path and stop wishing and washing, you know. Mm -hmm. Do the thing, do it right. Be real with yourself. Because God knows when you're wrong. God knows when you're right. And he knows everything you do. So don't try to show, show up before me. Because mm -hmm. I ain't got nowhere to sing but God do. So that's what you need to get your house. We need to get our house in order for God and ourselves. So that our soul can be saved. Mm -hmm. But you know, when you think about somebody like you, just wouldn't thought that Peter would have been like that because he had so much going for him. The first apostle, the first one, you know, that did a lot of things, even though he did deny Christ. But you know, you you kind of see that. But I'm saying, but he kept on doing some things. <laughs> mm. You know, he was a he was a strong person. He was a heavy hitter in his church. He was Paul's companion when they went on the first missionary journey. Mm -hmm. So he and Paul was tight there for a while yeah. until this little thing came. Yeah. And then Barnabas, he was a leader in the church. He was good. And what did he do? I, you know, here he was just. Peter was wrong, but because Peter did, they were falling right behind Peter. Mm -hmm. And that's not good. No. And then, too, sis, man, we got to, be, we got to stop being sneaky in what we do. Yeah. We need to be real about what we mm -hmm. don't. Take me out, you're going to do one thing, then you get to the next person, do another thing, talking behind my back, so that don't work. Mm -hmm. So whatever you do in the dark, we'll come to the light. See, when you like that, you still, it's kind of like they were with the, with the law, the Mosaic law. They kept trying to keep the law, and they couldn't keep it. You can't keep the law, because no matter what you say, you say, they ain't going to do this. I'm not going to do this. I'm not going to do that. Before you know it, you've already done it. And you didn't need to. It, it was a fact, but it showed you can't keep the law. God has to keep it. You, God has to keep us, so we cannot keep the law. The Jews couldn't keep it, but yet they want to hold on to it. And, and it was easy for them to have a little checklist and that shall not, that shall not, this time, check that out. I ain't killed nobody, I ain't, I, ain't, I ain't hurt nobody, I ain't done this, check that out, check that out. That's, that's not keeping the law, but what, what Paul was trying to say, you can't keep it anyway, because you're going to do something wrong. But trust in God. And let him keep it. Yeah. If you break one rule, he's going to break them all. Well, he talked about the rule in our other lesson. He talked about coveting. And Paul says uh, that that one is the last commandment, thou shalt not covet thy neighbor's house, wife, and so forth. Mm -hmm. But Paul was saying, if you get that one right, so because if you don't get that right, it can lead to some other things. Like you can end up if you covet somebody's property or whatever long enough, you don't find a way to get it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it could be killing somebody, it could be whatever, swimming or whatever the case. But as Paul is saying, if you if you don't take care of that one, even though it's the last one, it's the tenth one, if you don't take care of that, that could lead you to do some less stealing, murder, mm -hmm. all that kind of stuff. That's right. So we think about whatever a person has, God has given them that, that talent, their whatever. So you don't have time to cover that because you need to work on what he gave you. That's right. You don't need to. See, sometimes you want to, I've seen people want to be like somebody. I want to be this, like this person. If that person is driving a certain car, you're going to struggle yourself to death, try to get you one mm -hmm. just like it. Mm -hmm. Something we always stepping out where we really don't know. You don't know the price they have paid and they're going to pay. That's right. For what, they <coughs> have, what they're doing. So we have to be very careful. Mm -hmm. what, we have to work, you know, be careful who you follow. That's mm -hmm. right. 
because you don't really know them. And sometimes they don't like them. So we have to be very careful. We have to ask God to help us. I'll say we have to we have to serve God when we want to serve God when we don't want to okay. serve God when we don't feel like it like this morning. <laughs> <laughs> See how nice it would be under the cold getting up round about now. Yeah. That would be ideal. Yeah. But that's that's not what we do. We get up and we go whether we want to or whether we feel like it. That's right. Because God said we're going to serve him in the bad times as well as the good times. That's it's right. easy to praise God when everything is going good. God is good all the time. And all the time God is good. But when you have some when trouble hit and everything, he wants you to say the very same thing. That's right. <laughs> but it'll be hard when he wants you to say it. Are there any comments? You made a statement concerning, um, you know, we're not helping anybody, please. I think one of the things that we're just doing a lot of talking, talking, uh, what good are we? And whenever I heard the statement, I thought about the fact, uh, you know, what Paul was saying, you just, uh, uh, what was that, a sound of glass or a tinkling cymbal? Mm -hmm. You're just making noise. But God has called us. And as each one of us, no matter whether we are a strong Christian or weak Christian, and I know sometimes that phrase, we Christian, doesn't resonate with us too often because some of us like to think a weak Christian is not a Christian. Well, they have accepted Jesus as Lord and Savior. They're just not as strong as you are. They're not as seasoned as you are. This is the reason why we have to come together and support one another, encourage one another, because, you know, we have to strengthen one another. The reality of it is, the disciples were strengthened by Christ just by being in his presence. That's one of the reasons why whenever he was arrested, they scattered and they didn't know what to do because their hope and their life was not with them at that point in time. So we who are strong, you know, the scriptures say we who are strong ought to infer the, bear the infirmities of the weak. And one of those infirmities is that weakness. And we ought to support and encourage one another. And whether they are cliques or anything else, we need to stay focused on Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, we'll stay focused on Jesus Christ. We wouldn't have cliques because everybody would be focused on the same thing. Are there any other comments? Thank God for letting you do that observation. If there are any other comments, this concludes our Sunday school lesson for the day. Amen. We want to thank our pressing group.
this time we're here, someone from the adult class. We all need to go to God and ask Him to give us a clean mind and a clean heart. So we'll be able to do the right thing. Serve Him like we should. Those of you that on those of you that on free conference call, the reason why you're not hearing anything is because they're not saying anything right now. Uh, that's one of the things. That's one of the things that you have a problem with. Go ahead. Minister of the Anderson Chapel Missionary Baptist Church in the St. Stephen Sunday Church School, the 15th day of October in the year of our Lord 2023. The school will call to order by Deacon Ray May at 10 o'clock. Opening now by Trustee Ella Wu in business today. Prayer by Sister Dickens. Did I say it right? Mm -hmm. Okay. Scripture for today, Galatians 2, 11 through 21. The subject of the lesson, one's faith is, is the key. The main thought, Galatians 2 and 20. Teachers present was three. Total attendance is 33. Um, total offering today is $54. Um, the lesson was reviewed by 28 minutes by Trustee Wooten. Um, closing remarks were made to the school by the, for the youth, Trustee Williams, for the adult, Mother Dupree. All your officers remain the same. Sister, you going to change your name? Yes, no, sir. Minister Howard, but that's all right. <laughs> Oh, it's Trusty Ella Pitt, I'm sorry. <laughs> I didn't know where you were trying. <laughs> Got married again, huh? Yeah. Oh, no. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. She know better. <laughs> I didn't even catch it. <laughs> I bet it, in other correction. If not, we're going to receive the minute as given. At this time, we got to stand close out with word. Amen. 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 Amen.